Hello and welcome to our channel. My name is Herbert Fende and I just want to encourage you today. I'm going to be talking about vibrant tranquility. I'm talking about that peace, that tranquility which is according to the precious promises of God. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for affording us the opportunity once again to hear your word. We come to you with open minds, with open hearts, that we may learn from you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Please open your Bible, Philippians chapter 4, from verse 6 to 7. I'm reading from the King James Version. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This is the vibrant tranquility I'm talking about. Listen it from Jesus himself. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You know, we are living in troublous times. Even Jesus told us in his prophecy that... In the last days there shall be distress of nations with perplexity and one of the things happening is that fear is dominating faith fear is taking the place of faith but jesus has told us well in advance of what is coming and he promises us that he is going to give us vibrant tranquility peace in the midst of difficult circumstances i would like to invite you to come with me to the shores of the red sea Put yourself in chapter 14 of Exodus. Exodus chapter 14. Put yourself inside that crowd, that three million crowd. Come to the shores of the Red Sea. Can you see the massive waves of the deep dark sea? Can you hear the crashing waves of the sea? The crashing waves of the deep sea. Can you smell the sea spray? Hear the sound of cows, donkeys, camels, cats, dogs, chickens, you name it, they came out of Egypt with all their belongings, all their livestock. Everything is assembled before the seashore. If you are someone who is dominated by fear, I'm inviting you to come with your fear to the seashore. If you are someone who is dominated by anxiety, come with your anxiety to the seashore. Tell me how you feel in these circumstances. After a dramatic deliverance from Egypt, 400 years of slavery, they seem to be in a confining and undesirable circumstance. They had already received a message from God that he would harden Pharaoh's heart and that he would follow them in what pursuit. You know what that is called? It is called prophecy. God tells his people of coming trouble in advance so that they pray and ask for strength. I was reading the book called Patriarchs and Prophets and it says Pharaoh the king was resolved to intimidate Israelites by a grand display of power. If you want to see how much ammunition he took with him, just read Exodus chapter 14. He wanted to intimidate Israel with a grand display of power. God told Moses that Pharaoh would follow but within the same prophecy is included a message of hope. You can read it in Exodus chapter 14 verse 4. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon his hosts and the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. You know, even as today, we have been given prophecies of the, the coming crisis in the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation, but in the midst of that prophetic word which is telling us of coming trouble there are messages of victory 
so that we can experience vibrant tranquility while we wait. There are people who focus on the crisis, not on the promise of God. I want to tell you that you must focus on God's promise. Don't focus on the beast. Don't focus on the world coming boycott. Don't focus on the hardship that is God's people are going to experience. Focus on the promise of God. God told them that Pharaoh would come in what pursuit, but he also promised that the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. I wish I could tell you that being a child of God means you have power to bind the forces of evil, power to bind the devil so that he will not touch you in your life. I continue to hear such prayers which sanitize people's lives of all trouble. You will not suffer, you will not, you will not uh, uh, get sick, you will not get cancer, you will not get any challenges, you will be promoted at your work, you will get married with the best man in the world, everything, there is, there is nothing, no problem, your life is going to be smooth because you are called by the Lord's name. I can't do that, unfortunately. God has never promised that our lives shall be free of tribulation. He didn't. When you read the book of John chapter 16 verse 33, Jesus himself tells us this thing. He says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. In other words, tribulation is there. But be of good cheer. Why? Because he will be with us in the fire. He says, in this world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Did you hear that? You shall have tribulation, but you shall still experience vibrant tranquility because Jesus has overpowered the world. God will be with you in times of trials and tribulation. He will be with us in the fire and the flood. Please be not deceived. Just as Jesus suffered, he tells us the world shall hate you. And Peter tells us do not count it strange when you experience trials because the, just being a child of God is the reason why you will suffer trials and tribulation. The children of Israel found themselves in a confining position. You would think that God didn't know the geography of Egypt, where he led them. When you read Exodus chapter 14, God himself told them where to go and camp. Do you find yourself in a situation where you wonder if God is with you? Many people, when they are in a strait, when they are in difficult circumstances, they think God has deserted them. Here we have got a story of God telling people to go and camp at a confined position where there is no escape. Maybe your trials and tribulations are meant for God to show his power to other people through you. You know, there is a song I like which is called All the Way My Savior Leads Me. It says, All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask besides? Can I doubt his tender mercies who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. You know, I love this song. It is telling me just like the children of Israel were led to a strait. It wasn't to discourage them. It was to show power to the Egyptians. So God led them to a strait. The children of Israel found themselves in a confined position, rugged mountains on the sides, a raging sea in front of them, and the sure word of prophecy that Pharaoh would come. You see, they were in a strait, they were in a confined space where there is no escape route. Combined with that, they had a prophecy that Pharaoh would be pursuing them. Many times when we are in trouble, we forget God's precious promises and focus on the crisis. Just read for yourself in chapter 14 of Exodus. When they heard the sounds of the chariots, just read for yourself what they did. Please read Exodus chapter 14 after you watch this video. I cannot think of a more desperate situation. We are told that Pharaoh who was the king of the most powerful nation he had followed with the entire army of Egypt, including 600 of the best chariots 
and the top guns of Egypt. This was a religious conflict. The one god of Israel had overpowered the multiple gods of Egypt and they couldn't stand the embarrassment. God had promised Moses that the Egyptians would know that he is the Lord. His eyes ran to and fro to show himself mighty unto them that fear his name. All sorts of curses and insult were flung in the face of Moses by the same people he had led out of slavery to start with. How do you stand against over two million people shouting curses at you? I admire the vibrant tranquility of Moses in the face of the seething tempers and insults. Listen to what he said in Exodus chapter 14 verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more again. How did Moses know that this nation was going to be destroyed? God had not told him. God simply said he is going to show the Egyptians that he is the Lord. That's what he said. How did Moses compose himself in the face of this crisis? And tell the shouting crowd, tell the anxious crowd, tell the frightened crowd that just wait and see. I want to repeat what Moses said unto the people. He said, fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show you today. For the Egyptians you have seen today, you shall see them no more again. Do you see the power we get when we believe in the word of prophecy. Moses believed in the word of prophecy. He believed the word of God. He believed the precious promise of God that although Pharaoh is going to pursue you with his might, the whole arsenal of Egypt is going to come in what pursuit. But do not be afraid. Moses took that promise at God's word. And when the crisis broke, they are in front of the raging waves of the sea. There are mountains on the sides. There is no escape route. The, the crowds are shouting. And Moses had the composure to tell them, stand still. I wish we could trust God like Moses today. How did Moses know that? He simply trusted God's promise in Exodus chapter 14 verse 4. Are you facing difficult challenges that seem to be impossible? Do you have fear of the future? Are you being threatened by someone? Are you being persecuted? Whatever the challenge you are facing in your life, which seems like the Red Sea to be impossible, just stand still and see the deliverance from the Lord. What he has done for others, he will certainly do for you. Stay in your position of prayer and keep trusting in God. In his time, you will bring deliverance. When I look back in my life, I am encouraged by how God lifted me out of deep crisis from which no man could help. I can testify in his hand there is power. God is a deliverance specialist. I just want to encourage you to read the book of Exodus chapter 14 and see God in action delivering his people. That's the same way God acts in our lives on a daily basis. When you read from Exodus, when you read from Exodus chapter 14 verse 14, Moses tells the people, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. You know, when I listen to this instruction, I always think that God wanted them to walk on water. Speak to them to go forward. But because of their lack of faith, God tells Moses, Lift up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. I think this is the greatest divine intervention in human affairs that we have ever read in the Bible. God showed his power and God is telling you and me just before the world ends there is going to be another dramatic contest between the forces of evil and, and the people of God. And God has got another promise of a great evacuation. He is promising us not to be afraid. He is promising us to hold our peace. Even in our little lives in the present times, whatever challenges you are facing, whether it be sickness, whether it be disease, God is promising that he will be with you. He will be with you. And being with you does not necessarily mean that you will not die. You can still have peace in the face of death. There are many people who have died wonderfully. 
without fear, with peace, and their dead have ministered to other people to believe in God. Whatever you are going through, keep trusting in God and the peace that passeth understanding, the vibrant tranquility shall be given unto you. I hope that you shall stay encouraged today regardless of what you are facing and what is going on through your life. Let us pray. Our Father and the God of Israel, there is no other God like you that we can worship. You are a God who keeps and fulfills His promises. We claim every promise you have made with your mouth in the name of Jesus. We ask that you forgive us of our lack of faith and the fear we allow to dominate our minds. We thank you for all the words of prophecy you have given us and all the promises of victory by the blood of Jesus Christ. May you give us the peace that passeth understanding, the vibrant tranquility, so that we may not be intimidated by the evil one. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.